come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie talk show and review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to conquer the world one podcast listener at a time. And you're helping us out with that. So thank Especially you very this much. month. That's mm-hmm. right, because this is yes. Listener Request Month. It's yes. your month. Mm-hmm. So this is, uh, like we'd like to say, this is your fault. Yep. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> comes up, this is your doing. Mm-hmm. And, you have no uh, one to blame but yourself. Yeah, we are just... Whatever uh, our opinions are about the movies that you fault. picked, it's still your fault. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, we got a lot of mailbag this week. I knew, uh, I knew we would. Is, I knew we would. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, first of all, I suppose we should introduce ourselves. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, uh, we watched the first of four movies that were chosen by you, you. last you. month. So thanks for submitting your suggestions and for voting. Yes. So what yeah. did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched The Fly. From 1986. Mm-hmm. Not the original. Not the original. The remake by David Cronenberg. By David Cronenberg. Remakes and horror remakes. This one occupies a special kind of place, I think, in remake, uh, horror remake. Yeah, uh, it should. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. in my top 10 horror movies. Give me, mm-hmm. oh, top 10 horror movies? Top 10 horror movies. Well, that this, might be true. This is a this pretty is good iconic. movie. This is iconic. Solid one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we did a long time ago. I think we listed our top 10 either movies or horror movies at one point. We did, and I guarantee mine have drastically changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Mine are pretty much stasis. This is one of my top best. Sean's are all sequels. Horror (laughs) remakes? What do you got? Best horror remakes? This is... This is up there. Oh, yeah, this is top three. But, I mean, The Thing... Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, the okay, thing, okay. The fly. The John Carpenter's the thing. Yeah. There's, right. there's yeah. th- three, four. Oh, that's four right. Like yeah. Be after. specific. Yeah. 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 John <laughs> Carpenter's the thing. Yeah. Yes. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh. The Evil Dead 2013. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a hell of a top three right there. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. What else we got? See, I feel like we're missing some well, obvious. I should have thought about remakes. I put we the blob in there. I guess the oh, eighty-eight. Oh, the blob. The blob. Yes. Iconic. The blob. Honestly, my bloody Valentine remake is on awesome. par really with good. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really good. good. It's yeah. a different yeah. type of movie, yeah. but it's good. Yes. That one. That one is different for me though because like. It, I don't like it better than the original. I like them equally. Yeah, that's yeah. how I feel too. That's I feel yeah. like they're equally as good, like, but they scratch yeah. different like itches. Like the Blob, you know? I like the remake. The Thing, I like the remake. Yeah. But that one, I'm like, they're about even to me. Yeah. I like both of those. Yeah. Is that the thing about remakes? I mean, do we judge them on sometimes like how uh, much fidelity they have to the original? That's or... always part of it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's always part, part of it. it. You can judge them as just a movie, sure. But mm-hmm. I think in everyone's mind, if you know that it is a remake, you are comparing it to that at some yeah. level it either but has to be as good or better that's colin yeah. would always say mm-hmm. if you're going to do a remake you have to do you have better to do it better than the first one yeah. i mean that's yeah. yeah which is why you should be remaking bad movies not good movies yeah. because, because the bar, the bar is, is lower, lower. yes yeah. Yeah. night of the lepus yeah. <laughs> 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 give me the remake the spiders. <laughs> give me the remake right yeah. with old william shatner rack hansen yeah. yeah, I was gonna say if he, he has they to, do, they, they're back. Yeah, right. they, they've been dormant all this He's the time. Only man Give who him survived. the Halloween 2018 <laughs> no, treatment so you, to Kingdom of the Spiders. So you, so you want a sequel? Uh, I want. Yeah, you don't yes. want a remake. Yes. You want a sequel? Yeah. I want a legacy yeah. sequel of Kingdom of the Spiders. I, I think there is one. Didn't one just come Kingdom out? Of the like, Kingdom of the Spiders. I thought Spiders, Kingdom no of the Spiders too. I could be off on this. I'm having a fever dream, I'm maybe. With the shack? Like you with, no, just, he's not in it. See, that's what like I want the shack. The last well, yeah. year, yeah. You can't just drop this on us too? that you thought well, you, you heard of. You know like, Sally Hardesty in this new Texas Chainsaw movie? I want that to be William Shatner <laughs> yeah, and yeah, King yeah. Yeah. the Spiders I with yeah, the but spiders. It doesn't get thrown over. in garbage. But yeah, not fucking thrown away. It doesn't get literally thrown into garbage. Speaking of fucking remakes <laughs> yeah, yeah legacy yeah. sequels god yep. damn it. well i mean i don't like it when uh well see this is, i guess maybe it's a gray area because i was sitting there watching this tonight and i'm like i've seen the 1956 58 56 yep. the fly with yep. uh vincent price mm-hmm. yes. and i'm like i mean thematically there's Ooh. similar stuff going on here and there's some story points but not really i mean when you watch the thing 
versus the old thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're very different very movies. Different. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it's literally a living vegetable and ice. They say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when I see like the black Christmas, what was it? 20, one? 20, the yeah. latest one. 2018, 2019. <laughs> yeah. One? Where they just kind of throw away the plot of the first one. You're like, well, this doesn't have anything to do with it at all, right. but it yeah. has the title. Then I'm kind of like offended by the fact that you're, there's another movie with that title. It has right. nothing yeah, to do you're with just calling it that for namesake. Yeah. At least the 2006. Yeah. One you know head, what? That one's not know. looking so bad right now. Yeah, that one might need a <laughs> revisit yeah. just for perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a House of Wax situation. We revisit and we're like, oh, right? this is the movie of the decade. Right? We can add another mm-hmm. one to that collection. Mm-hmm. I just remember all the people in that one being very nasty. Okay, wait, yes. we're talking about yeah. The Fly. It's yeah. The Fly. Um, Cronenberg's The Fly. Where's David Cronenberg coming from at this point? Oh, man. The way Drum? that I remember, Video Drum was 83. Okay. So I want to say, was that the movie that he had done prior to this? In my memory, because I grew up during this period, right? I remember David Cronenberg was the guy who did Scanners. That was a yeah. big, when like... Was, when was Scanners? That was Looking like 81... Maybe 80, 81, it feels like. And then um, Videodrome. But before that, he'd done movies uh, like Shivers, or They Came From Within. And he had done The Brood. Rabbit. And he had done, thank you, and Rabbit. Uh, Prior to that. And then... And then it was like, okay, then he did The Fly. And The Fly mm-hmm. was like his first big, uh, like, studio movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was like, after that, his next movie, if I remember correctly, was Dead Ringers. And then you're like, mm-hmm. David Cronenberg, I thought you were I thought you were one of us. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you're, you're the horror Eastern film. And then Promises comes along. Yeah. Well, much later. Yeah. M-, M. Butterfly was the one that really kind of yeah. throws you for like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Lunch. he changed his the trajectory of his career. Sure. I think Dead Ringers kind of gave him a different cachet and he moved into like serious art house, you mm-hmm. know, serious filmmaking. Yeah. Right. Before oh my that, God. It was yeah. Like- he got real weird in recent years, <laughs> like weird as in weird for Cronenberg because it's normal. Like uh, <laughs> what was that Carl, Carl Young movie he did? A dangerous oh, method. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he yeah. I was gonna Real say Carter got weird with that. What are you talking? I mean, like <laughs> weird isn't like he got buttoned up. Like, right, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. He, he became like a normal director this all of a sudden. Clean Elvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Map to the stars, right? Yeah, or Cosmopolis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I did exactly. like Spider. Spider with uh, Ray yeah. Fiennes. I like yeah. that one. Um, I'm always surprised. Every time I watch A History of Violence and Eastern Promises, how yeah. much I like those movies. Because yeah. I feel like I shouldn't like the subject matter is rough at times. Yeah. And just like, they're really good. They're, really good. they're really good. They're not movies that I like to revisit, but they're really good. Well, History yeah, of exactly. Violence is great. And History of yeah. Violence yeah. like kind of attracted, you know, that was his third his third career. Yeah. yeah. It felt like was, you know, History of Violence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. but he did every once in a while, you know, there was uh, Existence and now Crimes of the Future, kind I of like those Ex- movies that tap back into like mm-hmm. what you think of his old Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like his Sam Raimi doing Drag Me to Hell. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's, that's a great doing. analogy. Actually, Stens looks like some 90s ash. It hair. is, and uh-huh. that's what makes it delightful. But it's, it's been on my list for a long time. We'll watch it soon. Oh, getting, a getting game designer roots. on the run from Assassins. All yes, I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> and Jude Law and what, Jennifer... Jason, Jason, Lee. Jason Lee. I was yeah. like, Jeff oh, yeah. Connelly, Jeff Jason Lee. I can't Ian remember Holmes which one. Well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. It's, it's a weird one. Yeah. You know, but it's then I think, weird. you know, Crimes of the Future, his new one is also Cronenberg weird. But I mean, okay, yes. everyone says it's weird, but no one says that if that movie's good or not. Everyone's okay. just like, it's weird. Yeah, it's, okay, but a, I need more than like, it's weird. Especially when you're talking about Cronenberg. I'm like, okay, well, which Cronenberg weird are we yeah, talking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like existence weird, okay. but yeah, I mean, I, I liked it, but, and I guess to you guys, I would recommend it like mm. flat out because it's a Cronenberg movie. You know what to expect. For, I think ears all over his body. Other mm-hmm. folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He like, yeah. uh, he, it, it's performance art that he grows organs. It's a, a strange, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm interested. It sounds <laughs> <Yeah>. interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so at this point in time, I think it was a weird choice for David Cronenberg to do a remake, you know, mm-hmm. because I think, you know, a lot of these guys, because to me, he was in the company of like John Carpenter and Wes Craven and George Romero or Toby Hooper or something like mm-hmm. that. He was in that kind of group and then mm-hmm. he kind of broke off. This is like, you know, this is the Dead Ringers was the departure and then he sure. formed his own lane, mm-hmm. it seems like. Um but yeah, to do a remake where you not... This is Paul McCartney doing wings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so how many of you, I guess, have seen uh, the original The Fly? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while, but yep. Yeah. I don't think I've yeah. seen I don't think I've seen it since like 
film like film class in college yeah. but yeah and i've seen the trios of horror segment basically right yeah, yeah many 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 times because everybody the remembers the, the kid. yeah the, the end because, scene well and he has the like it's bart and the fly switch like body parts basically they just switch heads mm. so yeah. it's bart with a fly head it was just super yeah. horrifying and then <laughs> The fly has little Bart head flying around. <laughs> yeah, which is which is oh, yeah, funny. I, that. I yeah. totally forgot about that until yeah. we were watching. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> like that's that's the fly that I want. But yeah. I forgot the Simpsons did yep, that. The Simpsons yeah. did it. Yep. <laughs> well, that one it seems to me that you know, like I remember it as being kind of like one of the schlock twentieth uh, century Fox, you know, like fifties mm-hmm. um, atomic monster movies. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when you watch it again, it's like that one does have you know it's in color and widescreen so it's like oh this was actually like a prestige you know movie Mm -hmm. that they put out like a legit you know fox were standing behind this uh, movie and it plays like a mystery like you don't know what actually i mean i suppose the title gives it away but you don't know what happened doesn't it start with like they come in and they find the body yeah Yeah. yeah, after everything's been happened he's crushed crushed. himself in a in a a press i feel like i watched it during like a, a unit of like what were all the movies that Tim Burton stole from? I think mm. is when yeah. I watched it. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because German um, cinema, all mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's. I mean, I guess that's my memory of it. You know, mm-hmm. is that it's a whodunit kind or not a whodunit, but like what happened? Oh, yeah, what happened? Leading up to yeah. this, and then um, because I think the guy, I don't remember if it was a transporter. That he was or teleporter that he There's was a developing. Box. I forgot. I think it is like uh, it's a clear box he's in. Yeah, so, it, so it is some kind of teleporter. Something he yeah. gets mixed with a fly somehow. But in the 1950s, uh, the only way that they, they didn't could know really... fusion, or yeah. they couldn't think of that, so they're just like, "We'll swap body parts." He gets a fly head and a claw. Yeah, <laughs> for some reason, because flies have claws apparently, mm-hmm. and uh, the body and arm go on to the fly. Yeah, <laughs> and so then they're always looking around for that fly, right? Yes. It's like we got to find the fly because yes. it's got his head on it. <laughs> um, but you don't find that out. I think why they're looking for this fly for yes. like the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting movie, and if you haven't seen it, you should probably check it yeah. out. But um, so in this one, now we're in the age of. Um, genetics mm-hmm. yes. right so yeah. cronenberg can Future. go like a, a a different way with this um who's in the movie jeff goldblum the one and only the mm-hmm. the flyest actor ever <laughs> like perfect casting for, perfect. Uh, perfect uh just based on eyes alone and his movements and he's he's great he's mm-hmm. so good you should have had an oscar for this he should have had he, an oscar for this especially like as the transition happens and he's still jeff goldblum under the makeup yes. that's incredible yeah. like yeah. you can still see all his weird facial his tics, tics and all yeah. this under the makeup that where he does that like, the last time you saw a movie like that where he does like that jeff bloom like side eye like he's thinking but yeah. you can see him doing it yeah oh. it Genius. He truly is Brundle Fly. He really yeah. is Brundle Fly. A true combination. Yeah. Of both. I just feel like nowadays, like, like I'm guess I'm trying to think of something similar, like the Davy Jones guy in like the Pirates movies. Oh, That's yeah. all like CG on his face. Yeah. So it's like there is no act. There might as well not be an actor. The whole character might as well be CG because it's like what facial expressions are even reading at that point when the well, whole face is Well, now it's all performance fake. capture. And mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. you know, I mean... I suppose in some ways you're getting the same, uh, okay, well, you're getting a result that's mm-hmm. trying yeah. to give you like, okay, here's this character and it's a the thing that you're yeah. looking and at. And if you, you see, like, see the, the, like the making of side by sides when they show exactly like the motion capture, like it's still mm-hmm. pretty impressive. Cause oh, the, it's very impressive. The movements are copied like exact, so it's still pretty cool. But, but this is like what's practical makeup. Yeah. Like it's right. just so. And there is something, uh, again, with practical, like being there. Yeah. Um, um, being the actor under the makeup yeah. to have using that. and using yes, it to have yeah. that like, not to have it added later or anything right to have it, like that layer of prosthetic right. and still be able to emote that's impressive well, channel the suffering it, yeah. yeah like jim carrey did with the grinch or whatever yeah, yeah. Like he was yeah. apparently yeah. a Ugh, terrorist that on that set yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a horrible movie um, it is a horrible movie <laughs> what are you talking about it's a really <laughs> but, un- unpleasant movie but it for really him to, but for them to be able to like to, as an actor to be able to use that the physicality of having all those things on him especially um, it being Jeff Goldblum and mm-hmm. the way he uses it in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's, a th- I'm, I was trying, you know, to think of like a uh, performance where like uh, an actor kind of gets buried under it. Because it seems to me that, you know, I've watched enough behind the scenes stuff of other movies where, the mask, you know, they, or mask. they uh, makeup effects guys. Elephant, elephant man. Uh, <laughs> 
Another movie that's related to this one, but I guess we'll get to that. Um, But it's always like the actor sits in the chair, right? And they build this thing up on them. Mm -hmm. And at some point they're looking at themselves in the mirror and then they start moving their face around because I think with all that shit on your face, you know, I mean, you think of the weight and just like how, I mean, it's flexible, but it's still more rigid than your skin. Yes. You're trying to project uh, an emotion through it. So you have to over exaggerate Mm -hmm. kind of your face in order to, for it to read on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Two really good uh, examples of this in Elvis. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. because uh, Austin Butler's got a ton of makeup on, but Tom Hanks in the crazy Colonel Parker get up mm-hmm. like is is pretty nuts makeup yeah, job on him. He's playing to the background. Yeah, Even this yeah year, he sure is. I thought like uh, probably we haven't we haven't lived through the Oscars yet at this point, uh-huh. but I'm like the whoever did the penguin makeup. Oh Tom my god, yes. in, uh, mm-hmm. the Batman that was is, remarkable. Is yeah. impressive, and you can when you're watching Colin Farrell like because he is doing a performance underneath all that shit yeah, of right. this specific character, yeah. you know. Uh, so he's able to do it, but I think like that's where I think we have to give that credit, and I think we are to Jeff Goldblum for pulling mm-hmm. this off, like this, because he has like this this transformation that he goes through. Mm-hmm. So there's stages, yeah, which I assume in the acting process you kind of break that down as like, okay, this is stage one, you know, Brundle fly, right. stage two, and so you work out like he can be in a whole mindset to do those portions right. and then move on. Right, he has to like gauge how far gone he is at each point, and you have to like you have. There's different movement. I think like you know he knows eventually that you're going to go to like all this kind of ticking, you know, fly ticking. Yes, yeah, but also like he's also in different stages of acceptance and sadness during this whole process. Mm -hmm. You know, like at one point he's melting down. He's like his life is over, and then another point he's like, hey. Look what I learned today. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's yeah. just very he, up and down. He has to act the human and the fly part. Of yeah. This. It's it, impressive. It, yes. I know. I, I, I seriously do when I say this. And I mean, like, I think that this is one of the great injustices of the Academy Awards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the only didn't. reason they didn't is because this movie's too gross. It's too gross for the Even Academy. Even though it to won award. the Oscar for the effects in that year. Because that's what you can, like, it, that makes sense. Like, yeah. no one's going to think anything of, like, a gross horror movie getting an effects award. It's like, of course it is, you know? Yeah. Like, but, it's the acceptable but the, one. The, the horror shunning at yeah. the Oscars for a performance like this was yeah. deep at this point. See, yeah. I wonder because I'm trying to think. Of, well, The Exorcist obviously was up for an Oscar in, mm-hmm. in the 70s, right? Yeah. And then um, Silence of the Lambs won everything. But I think yeah. Silence of the Lambs got by. Because, because they're it's like more of a thriller. Thriller. It's very prestige, more, yeah. yeah, very prestige. It also felt more. Yeah. I mean, there were no flies in it, but also felt more like real. Yeah. To say, yeah. To say it's that, a grounded movie. Yeah, more yeah. grounded yeah, than sure. obviously the fly would be, yes. And maybe um the Exorcist has a little bit of that too, that yeah. it still feels grounded, but I think it's you know, that's a supernatural that people by and large seem to believe in yeah, enough to true. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's not like, okay, this guy's gonna turn into a giant fly during right. movie. Yeah, there's so, no right. religion that incorporates that, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we'll you, find just, you have to die to turn There might be bad in in order to, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I mean, uh I remember um because uh Jeremy Irons um he worked for Cronenberg uh, with dead ringers and that's also tricky because like i mean that's another one of those parts where it was mm-hmm. like I mean, you did it in the fly and then you got to do this like with dead ringers where the guy's got to play two completely different people yep. yeah uh in scenes with himself mm-hmm. you know he's playing these twin mm-hmm. gynecologist uh brothers mm-hmm. and i remember he won the oscar the following year for reversal of fortune mm-hmm. and when he went up to collect his oscar he gave a shout out to David Cronenberg That's because cool. I think it was like, yeah, you got overlooked. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and yeah. It probably should have been nominated for, you know, either yeah. directing or, you know, he should have been mm-hmm. up for uh, the acting. Oscar. For the, yeah, the for way the they, they give, you know, score the Oscar awards, the, yeah. and like Howard Shore should have been nominated mm-hmm. for an Oscar for this score. Yeah. If he wasn't, I don't know, but mm-hmm. should have won. I think, too, in like the pantheon of great horror scores, this movie does not get brought up enough. Right, Probably like not. everyone immediately thinks Carpenter stuff or whatever, you know, for that Friday Thirteenth, whatever. Yeah. Howard but Shore, this man. This is yeah. This should be in the conversation more. Mm-hmm. It's oh, fantastic. definitely. This is it's it ends up being one of the most like devastating scores mm-hmm. I've yeah I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Howard Shore has very like lush and like layered scores. Like, yeah, I, I like I, I I mean the Lord of the Rings soundtracks are incredible, mm. but yeah, you know, like he's everything the perfect is guy for that. Yeah, yeah, he's mm-hmm. remarkable. But I think he's done all, nearly all of David Cronenberg's, like so he's cool. he's done a lot of David Cronenberg stuff, let's put it that way. I, yeah. can't, mm-hmm. I can't say if it's everything, but he was like the standby guy for Cronenberg. I love that. Mm-hmm. And then he was also, I remember like every single serial killer movie that came out in the <laughs> 90s was Howard Shore was mm-hmm. the serial killer guy. <laughs> like, he could do Seven or Silence of the Lambs mm-hmm. or Copycat. Did he do Copycat? I was going to say, did he do Copycat? What was the other movie we watched? Um where the, the girl's stuck in the tank at the end. Uh, yeah, is that Howard Shore? I don't think. Was that Howard Shore? The Cell. Cute. The Cell. That's, that's oh. not, not, not cute. I was like, cute. What are you talking cell, about? Yeah. That wasn't might have been Howard Shore, think, too. Wasn't that Howard Shore? I think it was it Howard Shore. Because we were all just like, <laughs> this all this sounds like every serial killer movie. Mm-hmm. So all my picks got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think, you know, I was just, I think the, uh, the, the usual descriptor that I hear with this score is operatic. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, when it starts... You know, right after the 20th Century Fox logo, there's this big, you know, fanfare kind of bringing you into the, the into the fly. Yeah, and, credits. And, like, you are about to see a movie. <laughs> yeah, and a whole, like, overture yeah. over the opening credits mm-hmm. of the of the movie. And Which I like. Gets you in the mood. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have probably heard this, but I believe that the fly was turned into an opera. Oh, I'm just remember. imagining the opera from opera, Dario Gento's opera, <laughs> and how weird that version of, uh, was it Macbeth? Yeah. Yeah, and like there's like a crashed airplane and like a like suit of armor and a gun. It, I'm imagining that's how weird like, that Bob would be. Lerman's. Yeah, yes. I don't know who directed it. But the Fly I, I, is an opera in two acts by Canadian composer Howard Shore. There you go. Oh, there we go. Get, get okay. that money. Yeah. With, get a, it, Howard. with a libretto by David Henry Huang. Uh, commissioned in Paris, France, premiered in 2008. Yeah. Interesting. Loosely based on The Fly by David Cronenberg. Yeah. Well, how how I gross mean, does it get? <laughs> interesting. Probably, I'm sh- assuming it's the same plot structure, you know, like... Uh, it's like The, the Fly meets yeah. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. yeah. That's, like, I'm just picturing they're drawing, like, some black lines on his face, and that's, like, the equivalent of his transformation, you know? I just, like, want, yeah, I'm sure it's very go- I just want the goggles. Yeah. Just big fly goggles. <laughs> True. I wonder if True. you can get that album somewhere. Well, you have the album for, I guess, the movie, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and Gina Davis is also yeah. in this movie? Yes. Um, she was famously dating, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Goldblum either at the time of the movie. I think they started dating during the movie. Mm-hmm. Did they meet? They did three movies together. If I remember I correctly, so. they did, um, Transylvania six, 5,000, mm-hmm. <laughs> which, which might've been where yeah. they met. Is that where she's, she had and, uh, Earth Girls are yes. easy. Uh, and I've Earth Girls are yeah. easy. Earth Girls are easy. Yeah. yeah. Which I think was after this. That might have been 88, and I might be off on my dates. That? I feel but, like it was before this. But I know they did three together, because yeah. they were, you know, like a power couple in Hollywood at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I guess, is there anybody else to speak of? I mean, John I guess Getz. it's uh, John Getz is the third um, lead. Yeah. The lead supporting. Supporting. He's a supporter. But he's the, the third leg of this uh, romantic triangle, I guess, that we have going on here. Do we have a romantic triangle? Is this a love story? What is the fly? Uh, I mean, it's a complicated triangle as far as, like, feelings go, but it's pretty much just Gina Davis only has feelings for Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those triangles where one point's way yeah. farther away than the other but they two. they used yeah. to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. And he'd still like them to be a thing. Right. So there are... Feelings. Exactly. An moment. emotional triangle. Yes. Yeah. Yes, if nothing else. That's, mm-hmm. That works. I've been an emotional rom. <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> <the most. laughs> Well, the movie is mostly a tragedy, I guess, is the other thing. All yeah. great operas should be. Um, mm-hmm. True. That's where you get the emotion. Mm-hmm. So the the and a cameo by David Cronenberg himself. That's right, <laughs> playing a gynecologist, which I suppose is then why he was like, you know, I should make a movie about this. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I mean, I guess we could talk about the plot, um, or I don't know. I mean, to be honest, there's not a ton of plot to this movie if you think about it. Like, I mean, really, it's pretty, pretty, straight, it's pretty but straightforward. It's pretty no, much yeah, like a thing simple happens. Idea stretched over. Two yeah, hours. yeah, yeah. But, done but it very does. Well. It, yeah, yeah, but it does get. And there's like almost. I was surprised watching it this time at how small the cast is and how there's like two locations in this yeah. movie. Like, how this it could is very be like small. There's like there's a play yeah. slash opera yeah. like. 
it makes sense that it works for the stage because yes. there's a lot happening in a small because, space. Right, mm-hmm. lights go up yeah. and you get two two uh, pods mm-hmm. on the stage and then just like, oh, your interest mm-hmm. peaked. And then you go yeah. from there, like you can have entrances Lots from of fog the character. Machine. Right, again, mm-hmm. uh, it reminds me, and I've, I've told this story before, I think, on here when we've talked about the fly before, but the first time I ever... Um, uh, well, I'll say came in contact with the fly Universal Studios back in the day <laughs> around the time I got slimed just to, as a callback. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Glad <laughs> we got had, the slime timeline down. Right, uh, but they had, um, I mean, it's a, it's a movie studio. So they had a special effects um, ride. Technically you'd go on and sit in a crowd and they would do a bunch of special effects and like fully design and everything. And one of the things was, um, they had the Getting, two pods on stage. Up oh, there. and so and you cer- got vomited on by a fly. No, but at a certain <laughs> point, like one of them opened up, the fog comes out, and all you see is a bits of the fly reaching towards you. Oh, nice! You know, That's pretty cool. cool. Like, no, it was a great special effects yeah. like show. It was awesome. In my, in my mind of the life of Sean, it's just you getting slimed on in various yeah, in yeah different versions situations. of you, just like yeah. different things, but getting slimed. And you're right. just like, how does this keep happening? This is why like, I can't yeah. I can't listen or watch the slime, right. the, the vomit, the yeah. like, like that. It's too personal. I can't yeah, it. like it's you getting slimed at Nickelodeon, and then it's you getting slimed at the fly, and then you just have the grocery store, you just get slimed for no reason. Slime, yep. Yeah, that's, I like this. That's my movie. <laughs> it's like, not again. <laughs> God damn it. Well, I got some trivia for you on those pods. Uh, David Cronenberg, big racing fan, apparently. Like, I don't know if you, yeah, I always racing. see David Cronenberg Horse, is dog, like a car. He's a real wild motorcycle. Thing, isn't he? Well, oh. and, and cars, because his. Oh, I was um, going to say, like, Indy 500. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sure, like, he's a NASCAR guy or something. Yeah. All right. So, what if I told you that, you have, that we have collectively forgotten about a David Cronenberg movie? Oh. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. What yeah. is it? it? It's called Fast Company, and it's about a race car driver. Oh, I thought you were going to say Crash. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, crash. Yeah, yeah, crash. Right. I was like, I know. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and crash. Yeah. So he's always been kind of interested in speed, mm-hmm. and you know, so you get characters like Rabbit. She's a motorcycle uh, racer, right? Sure, sure. Um, but the, I guess the pods. Uh, he actually, they were inspired by a car a motorcycle carburetor. Oh, that makes oh. sense. That's what that makes sense. Turned, on yeah. Side, yes. Yeah, with the fins on them and all that. So I that thought was it was going to be like a Dalek or something from <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that, looks like. <laughs> that makes sense. That is those ridges and everything. Yeah, yeah, the fins, as you say, look very familiar. Okay. I think that's also an opportunity. We got to uh, uh, give a shout out to Carol Spear. She's the um, production designer yes. on fantastic. a lot of David Cronenberg's stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she passed away within the last couple of years, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Oh, thank you but, to her. She's yeah. done a lot of a lot of his movies, a lot of she other people's really movies. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean because you say it, it takes place basically, for the most part, in like one location and yeah. a couple yeah. apartments. You know, um, the design of his um, like st- it's not a studio; it's like it's a like warehouse. A it's a loft. loft yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like his. It's like his. Um, like personal laboratory, but also his apartment. It's mm-hmm. an abandoned building. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So very large, so, mm-hmm. pi- exposed pipes and mm-hmm. walls and shit. Yeah, it's like the the. Property they buy in Ghost. Right. Yes. Like that. Less sophisticated. But yeah. 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 But nice open floor plan. Yeah. So you can yeah. move your yeah. camera around. Yeah. You can move your teleportation Gosh, it's a movie house. Yeah. You can you imagine what they could have done with that one? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right. Man. <laughs> well, I think Swayze would have made that so pretty. <laughs> He's a uh, scientist who works yeah. for. I love uh, how this opens at the at the event where it's like the the, the science. Party? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, what is it? It's a party, but it's like um, but is it for scientists? Yeah, is it's it, an event for scientists. It's like they're yeah. showing off. Uh, it's like a talent show for scientists. It's, uh, it's an expo. Which, yeah, an expo. An expo. Thank you. <laughs> an expo. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm like, what the fuck word am I looking for? Yeah, the only expo. way I got to that was like, what did Tony Stark do? It was yeah. an expo. An expo. Yeah. Right. The good old days of the end the World Expo. Right. Science world expo, expo and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I love the way this plays out because he's just like like it just cuts right to Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum and he's like, I'm gonna change the world. And she was like Everyone here says that, and he's like, "But I'm really going to cut to them going to his apartment." Yeah, yeah. I was Get like, right "That easy, the best yeah. that easy." Yeah, the, the the scripting, you know, is another thing I guess to call out about this movie. It's like it's really well. The first line is like, "What am I working on? I'm working on something that's going to change the course mm-hmm. of you know, you know history." As we know it, <laughs> it gets to the point, and I like that. And you're always kind of intrigued, and you know, it's like, "Well, what what yeah. is he working on? What is this going to be?" Yeah. Um, and like the whole scene, how it pans out at his apartment, like he walks, like it's super creepy because. 
it's like an abandoned building with a big metal door mm-hmm. and it's like and a padlock. And, and, a giant yeah. padlock. and even Sean pointed out, he's like, well, this is the scariest thing like so right, this far. This is scarier yeah. than getting up there and <laughs> right. being like yeah. science experiment. <laughs> like, like, yeah, this man luring you to his abandoned that's building. That's terrifying. But then they get inside and he like instantly sits down at his piano and starts playing. And I'm like, well, I'm seduced by this guy. <laughs> like, this is great. <laughs> but he drops a key piece of information on this car ride, though. He has motion sickness mm. and always has. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it seems like he can't even handle like a five minute car ride. It yeah. seems pretty rough. Yeah. So Sounds awful. Yeah. Yes. I get motion sick, but I can ride in a car. Yeah. Not in the back, yes. though. <laughs> he got yeah. sick on a tricycle. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. he has uh, taken that into account in his experiments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's found a way to solve it. Yeah. That was it, right? It was like, I get, I get motion sick. So I want to so be able to get from here to there everywhere. without. <laughs> simple, like, simple but here's, here's simple, my first yeah. question of this movie how how does he how is he going to make this work be like with the like the pods work but what is he just going to move these pods to wherever he needs to be all the time well this i mean this is the very beginning point yeah he's right like, yeah. right but, though, but the, they jumped the conclusion so quickly because she's like you'll never have to drive or fly again and it's like well Eventually, yeah, 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 yeah like twenty right. years Eventually. now. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, going to no, take some time. This is not yes. a, like an instant solve here. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. like he's got to take a huge pod and put That's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's like already this, at the grocery right. store. Can I yeah. keep this here? It's like, just yes. for when I need it's like to sure, Bell Bell invented the telephone, but other people needed a phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Did Star Trek come up with like the whole idea that to teleport you got to be like broken down and reassembled at like the other end or whatever? I mean that's kind of what I, it's doing here. I mean I that was where that comes. I was from. like that was in Willy Wonka. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean as we discover how <laughs> technology works and what we do with information, and I mean they just uh, relate it to information because mm-hmm. you know when we're sending information between computers, it's broken down into some form or another mm-hmm. and sent to another one. So you take that principle, apply it to right. something a little bit bigger and there you go yeah. it will be broken down and restructured over like here. i said willy wonk at the chocolate bar yep. yeah information mm-hmm. yeah i wrote a stephen king story once i want to say it was called the lurch and it had the most horrifying because he was like the only guy or the first guy that came up with this i'm like oh that's right that'd be terrifying but it was like kind of a i think it was a you know a space journey or something where i don't think people were torn apart put back together Mm -hmm. but what nobody ever seems to really consider is like well what effect does that have psychologically on you right and to him in like in in the story it's like the interval is like time stops it goes on forever so when you come out the other side even though it's instant uh Mm -hmm. you're like insane like everybody would come out would be go insane right and it's like how come like what's going on (laughs) yeah broken down you were there forever i was was thinking about that when we were watching this because obviously his biggest thing was was trying to transport you know living tissue and i'm like yeah but what about your consciousness right how do you transport that how is that and how do you trust a computer to put you back together right right, right. Like you can only well, again the computer only knows what you tell it he says so in the movie right right so if you didn't tell him the complete yeah, all instructions your to putting you back yeah. together like this mm-hmm. yeah yeah your things it's not gonna know like yeah, it's gotta you put can, your brain back right. together. Man. you can transfer tissue all you want but like you can think about this forever yeah. and just be like Wah! it's terrifying magnetic <laughs> he did fields this. and whatever you have going on the body generates and you put it together right we all the brain that. waves are out oh, of yeah. sync and but, oh, yeah. but yeah like, <laughs> just because the brain's like taken apart and then reassembled doesn't mean all the memories and information is still intact exactly. you know yeah, so you like know that's gonna be there yeah. when you go through well you're mm-hmm. well I suppose well, you're, some, you're assuming that if everything goes back in the right place all the connections should be there but whether or not I don't know. You got a smart this is computer you, that tells yeah. you to put yeah. my synapse right back to where it was before. Yeah, and that this is the retriever of this information. Yeah. Instead, it yeah. gets put And there's over a here. lot of consciousness that science can't explain. Yeah. So it's just it's true. But I like that it fixed his depression for a little bit. <laughs> I was like, that's it. I was like, okay, it doesn't seem so bad. Like, he seems like he's enjoying life right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, put me in a tube. <laughs> Those serotonin receptors right, got right? connected when he got rearranged. He's <laughs> fucking high right now. Yeah. Can you get put back together better? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's like when people get all up on about microchips controlling us and whatnot. Go ahead. You know what? Maybe maybe fix that serotonin that's floating around up there you that know, my body do doesn't want to receive. Right? Yeah, you know what? If you people yeah, yeah think uh, microchips going to be able to like <laughs> stop your body, what? Let's yeah. go the opposite way. What yeah. else can it do? Yeah, these are the bump fears my, that old people yeah. have. Bump up my brain capacity a little yeah. bit. Give me a yeah. little boost, you know. Let's go back to giant mnemonic. And put fucking hard <laughs> yes. drives in our Seriously. head. Seriously, yeah. Give me I mean, some confidence. This yeah, is, this is probably a concept for a movie somewhere oh. in here. Right? Uh, we can, we can mine this list movie and the, like. Oh. Oh, we can use 100 percent of our brains. Bradley yeah. Cooper takes a pill with us or something. Yeah, yeah but with yeah. teleportation, we'll take that part from the fly. And we'll okay. <laughs> but why do we need to teleport <laughs> if we have all these? 
capabilities in our brain. Because if you can be taken apart and put back together somewhere else, yeah. and I mean, that's because a sometimes part of the... I want to get out of my fucking bed yeah. and go to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes it's as simple well, see, as that. See, you need a bed-sized one. You need to be able to wheel your whole bed into the teleporter. I just the to go, zzz, cover up the bed, transport <laughs> yeah. me, yeah. and then... Well, no, that's... Uh, what, what's the Bruce Willis... I keep thinking it's passengers, but that's not it. Um, surrogates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where no, just, yeah. Stay, stay tuned someday. <laughs> sure, yes. Oh boy. Yes. You can go places without leaving your home. And you then go to the strip club. That's Oculus like the first thing Rift. He does. I mean, that's barely fun to begin with. Um, mm-hmm. Ready player one. In a, no. mm-hmm. Um. But a love story develops between these two. She's the journalist. He's the scientist. Yes, you did call this the remo- most romantic horror movie you've ever seen, Colin. Last week. Is it true? It's, I think it's up there. It's a. Lo- it's definitely it's uh, a love story. It's a love story. She I'm goes a the distance for him. Eh, I'm, but I'm love little, story, yes. I'm a little fuzzy on the timeline of this movie, which makes it hard for me to believe it's true love. Ah, love doesn't adhere to a timeline, Holly. Just <laughs> uh, go with it, it. That must be my problem. <laughs> I think. So. <laughs> I think so, Holly. Okay, you're just on a timeline. Dad, we nailed that down. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be. <laughs> Maybe it's because okay, so I was thinking about that. I'm like, all right. So are we talking? It's uh, it's a, a blossoming blossoming romance that's intersected by tragedy, and I think yeah. maybe it's because the emotional weight of the by the end uh, helped along by Howard Shore, yes, mm-hmm. and Chris Wallace, who we're going to have to talk about and at Jeff some Goldblum's point. Changing body, it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not it has such Regina a Davis is bad crying. Very She's bad. Not crying. great. Not a good well, I believed it. You didn't believe it. No, because she was talking with the same inflection, but tears were coming down her face. So no, I was not buying it. Oh man, I thought there was some powerful acting mm-hmm. that she was doing there. That was good with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Be afraid. She works for Particle magazine. <laughs> Particle, yeah. I always love David Cronenberg's sci-fi like companies that he comes up with. Yeah. <laughs> Cortical Systems and yeah. Antenna Research and Particle Magazine. Particle Magazine. Who reads Particle <laughs> Magazine? <laughs> the same people who read Omni. You remember Omni no. Magazine? I, I, I vaguely mean, do, yes. <laughs> what was the science magazine that we all... Omni. No, mm-hmm. oh. it had science in the title. Um Modern what? science. Popular like science? science. Modern mm-hmm. science? Popular Modern science? Popular science. Oh, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yes. No, Omni was more like as far as know, I went. Seemed like I mean, it, well, anyway. I don't want to read about. Then there was chips. Wired, you know, it came later. Well, yeah, 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 Wired. But these <laughs> are something else. But these are like industry publications. Yes. All the people yeah, the in it are the people reading it. Yeah, like it's the Hollywood same group gets of people. Uh, variety in the Hollywood Reporter. Science World has Particle Magazine. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Where exactly. the big studs of science <laughs> exactly. are featured. I, but trust me, I had to order some weird-ass IT magazines when I used to work for the IT faculty oh, at boy. my school. And I was like, why do these exist? They exist for the teachers did like you, that. Yeah. Did you get them for them and they open it up and they immediately look looking at the centerfolds of like <laughs> new tech design and new shit? CNC machines or something? Look at that yeah. motherboard. Yeah, they have those pasted on their walls. <laughs> no. In their lockers? Come on. They don't count. have lockers. They have offices. Well, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> is Motherboard a print magazine or is that just a I website? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> Motherboard is a porn magazine. Somewhere for someone. Whether maybe it just shows microchips. But yeah. but it's Motherboard B O R E D. Oh. 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 Yep. Uh, <laughs> wow. They're not all winners. I stand by it. <laughs> well, he's developed this thing, but uh doesn't have a key part of the equation Flesh. because he sends a baboon through and it comes out uh it turned this inside out question. this yeah i have so many issues with this why would you start with a baboon like first well, of all where did is, you get it Second who's your baboon why'd you guy? start with that i hate i hate to bring this up but i read it so i must there is a deleted scene with a cat <gasps> oh no <laughs> it's on the disc i think oh, yeah, it's, it's, it. it's on the disc on i'm so sorry it. god damn it Again, I read it. So uh, I it up. There yeah. are deleted scenes of God smaller animals. Damn it. So there was at least some sort of a progression to a baboon. Okay, okay. Uh, so, well, that makes more yeah. sense, but I'm grateful it's deleted. So, yeah, yeah so I mean, we you know, didn't have to experience it. You only yeah. had baboon death. I just yeah, assumed it was like it's close to humans, is why he picked well, it. I think, yeah. well, I think so, which is what I think yeah. they get away with it in the movie. And I think there is in the deleted scene some like uh, talk about where they come from or you know, okay. whatever who's supplying okay. it. Uh, so yeah, the supply right. chain of baboons, yeah. which okay. doesn't seem like it's. Uh, how much do you pay for a baboon? I just wanted to see like 
uh, just but, kind of like a stereotypical UPS guy pull up and just lift up the back of a truck and unload a bunch of food yeah. or there's something Where does he keep them? Does he just get one at a time? He yeah. had a cage. He's paying someone off yeah. at the zoo. Yeah. No, it's a uh, bar talk industry. Yeah, he's sponsored. Yeah, he's yeah, well, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Animal testing yeah. was a he, big thing. He's yeah. coming yeah. from the man's best friend facility that Lance Hendrickson's running. Very That's true. Where these yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But I mean, if, I guess it does make sense if you think about it because he does kind of jump the gun with his, his experimenting because after he like fucks up and turns the baboon inside out, then he's like, oh, let's try a steak. It's like, you yeah. probably should have done that first. Yeah. Do a and plant. Then, yeah. And then when he finally like gets it, like as soon as he successfully transports the baboon, he's like, well, I'm going to jump in. Yeah. So he does jump the gun, it seems. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's, he's drunk, uh, drunk and, emotional. and emotional. Yes. Jealous. Uh, yeah, he's having a, a bad. He, that's when you get a weird haircut. So he, this is like teleport. so instead of bangs. <laughs> yeah, but he has a teleporter <laughs> just sitting there. I mean, like right. you know, Way they kind of bangs. Yeah. <laughs> this is like some weird self harm sort of like vengeance or something. Yeah. I'm jealous that you're being harassed this by is, your ex. Well, he so I'm going well, to teleport myself. It, yeah. It's it's him having because he thinks that. It's him. Uh, I mean, it's him getting back at her. It's just like you do this thing with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing with what? What is that his, we were supposed so to? I'm gonna cheat science. on you it's, with it's the teleporter. Part. He's cheating on her with science. <laughs> okay. Science you know is his I lover. Like that logic. And now he's doing something with science. I am on board with this. Yeah, yeah. That that science sense. is his lover. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do appreciate the scene leading up to it where he's talking to the baboon. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. Like, yeah. so she's with him right now, right? Like that's who it is. It's her ex. And he's the baboon's just sitting there in the chair. That was like. That was that cracked me yeah. up. Yeah, like, it has like a kind of a genuine. I guess you know, it's like this. This is a movie that takes its time. It's not like an overlong movie, but no. like the progression of it does kind of feel genuine. Leading into this, like I guess the end of the first act is he uh, teleports himself, but there's a fly in the in the chamber with him, and so mm -hmm. it fuses them together. And then you're like, well, what's going to happen? But well. not right. It's not like an obvious physical transformation right away. He comes out looking like normal, sexy Jeff Goldblum, mm -hmm. but yes, but he is genetically spliced. With yeah, a fly. and now he can do gymnastics. <laughs> he, really good gymnastics. <laughs> really good like, gymnastics. And he has a sex like a drive, routine. Like nobody's business. Yep. Yeah. Well, it seems who, like knew, who knew flies had such a sex drive? Uh, yeah, I didn't. That's well, most of these transformation movies do seem to go like uh, initially after you get bitten by the werewolf, there is that uh, you know initial Sexy like time. ooh. Well, there's a discovery of extra Kell. abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. The Stefano Kell syndrome. Stefano Kell. <laughs> yeah. You go through the box, you come out sexy. That's like that's how it works. <laughs> I buy it. Yeah, yes. when you it's go just how the, box, it, the logic of it. Sexy. Well, yeah. it's sexy because it's David Cronenberg, a clinical kind of guy who loves to like have uh, human romance. Yeah, and sexy his... because it's Jeff Goldblum. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, Gina Truly. Davis too is him, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. So he comes out and has uh, this new like thinks that he's been reborn, filtered by the. Yeah. Gets very excited. Mm -hmm. Over coffee and sugar. Oh, that was making my stomach hurt. Like, this is the first of many times my stomach hurt watching this movie. But, it's like, I started counting scoops of sugar, a and lot. then there was a couple cuts, and I lost track. But the, I counted, like, eight or nine, and that was early on. And That's I was like, oh, yeah. my sugar. God. I, sugar. And I, just, I always, whenever I see him eating the sugar and eating the candy bars, the first thing that always comes to mind is Beetlejuice. When he's like, I got a little something for you. You know, something <laughs> yeah. He's holding up the candy bar to the fly, and then yeah. he pulls him in. yeah. That's that's, that's that's why that's in Beetlejuice. Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Flies that's like fun. sugar. And then his angry marching down the street while aggressively opening like a fucking baby Ruth or something and right. biting into yeah. it. That was a yeah. pretty great scene. That scene where he uh, arm wrestles uh -huh. the guy Do and breaks his arm. That I mean, because that's like the first really graphic yes. uh, moment that's kind of saying like, okay, I mean, I know you've been here and it's, you know, you're in a monster movie, right? I think the ads actually said like the fly, the monster movie. This movie came out the same summer as Aliens, uh, the fly, and then it was Big Trouble in Little China where wow. the three movies wow. that Fox had summer. like right. one right after the wow. other. Damn. And I remember them being advertised together. But I remember that was like the fly, and it said somewhere, you know, the be afraid, be very afraid. But it was also like the monster movie. Dude, Did you see all of those in theaters, Colin? No, I didn't get to see yeah, that's a fucking any of summer, them in, yeah. in yeah. theaters. That's uh, 86. It's good year. Right? Yeah. Good year at the drive in. Ooh, mm -hmm. nice. Or at the mall, probably, mm -hmm. where you were. Um, but it, um, the, uh, so then he becomes, he begins to, uh, well, he cheats on her, I guess, with the, the girl that uh, he picks right. up at the bar. Yeah. Because at, at this point, he's like, he, his personality is changing. Yes. He's like, 
she's like, oh, we've been having sex for three straight hours. I need a break. And he was like, well, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Like immediate. I, kinda... part- I need a partner that can go all the way all the time. Yeah. yeah. Cause he hasn't yeah. realized there's a problem. He thinks he's just been, like we said, put through a filter and he's yeah. come out more pure at the mm-hmm. end of it. And he's and like trying to get her to do it and she won't. And... Yep. Power couple. Yeah. And he finds out that he's got a problem because parts of him start falling off and, you know, he's in the bathroom with uh, his fingernails, Ugh. Ugh. which is another scene that I think, like, you know, is really disturbing to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Especially because he's just, he's Jeff Goldblum and he's he's very insect-like as a person. Mm-hmm. As, especially at this time. He's got the big eyes. He's got the long fingers. like a fingers. praying mantis. He yeah. is. Like, he, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's just a... Uh, a sexy uh, praying man. Yeah. Well, he does all those hand gestures. Like he knows that that's his look, so he like plays up the hand gestures. Yes. Like when he goes cheeseburger and like waves his fingers at her. But face, he's always like, got like uh, he's always motioning towards something or pulling yeah. back. Like he's very. I mean, yeah. being just he's, Jeff Goldblum. One of the, it's yeah. just Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. very expressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but she even like mimics the hand gesture later <laughs> back at him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have a good chemistry yeah. together. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing. I guess <laughs> of the movie. Uh, kind of uses to its advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, it always seemed to me that around this part of the movie, the movie becomes like an allegory for like cancer. Uh, I mean, I guess he says it yeah. at some or point, you know, but cancer AIDS at some point, like some disease. Yep. Yeah. AIDS is probably uh... more than cancer. In this, I, I mean, I guess either one would me. work. I, like, I think it's interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I and some so. kind one of the one of the people in the relationship is coming down with yeah. a fatal. It's, it's a life altering disease, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But eventually he determines, well, I guess there is like, you know, the kind of like, yeah, am I going to die? What's this he thing going to do to me? He does get into a desperation mode, which is. Yeah, that changes his personality again. And then he's kind of apologetic and, you know, like, but you got to stay away from me because it might be contagious. And, you know, yes. before he determines falls off. what the thing actually, what the disease wants. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, which is to turn him into some kind of new being, a brundle fly that has mm-hmm. never existed before. So Jeff Goldblum actually ceased to exist the moment he or Seth Brundle didn't exist after he came out of the teleportation yep. mm-hmm. pod. Mm-hmm. Um, the makeup He's gets progressively like, uh, oh. yeah, it starts off. Like, I love how subtle the, the changes are between certain yeah. scenes. Like, it's like, just yeah, like, it's like, 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 yeah, he's like splotchy and his acne and just looks kind of tired at first. Like there's no like real deformity, you know, it's mm-hmm. just kind of like some skin issues. And then, yeah. And then it gets like pussier and like, this movie has so much like wet, to it that is really <laughs> upsetting like yeah. so too many fluids too many sticky too surfaces many fluids. the the sound editing too is much vomiting for me yeah. because yeah. i always i always remember the removal of the nail yeah i was mm-hmm. figuring out oh, that sound it's scraping kind of yeah that just yeah. the connection and then just or whatever coming out is, of yeah. skin yeah people vomiting on things and sucking it can't back up it. Oh, the, no. nope, nope. The worst part of this movie, I yep. can't listen to the yep. sucking back. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just... ugh, gross. Well, later when he's attacking uh, Stathis Borens and, 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 you know, they're doing all that great, like, 80s melting hand, yes. melting feet. He's playing with the tip of the, the yeah. toe of the, uh, as he's pulling. I mean, like, that. Yeah. that's what got me. I guess, like, him just using the tip of the guy's toe to pull his foot off. As he it, is, because he's it's pulling melting. it as, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very gross movie. I mean, yes. like, you know, probably pushing hard against the uh, boundaries of what you could get away with in an R-rated right? like, movie. Yeah. I just, yeah. I can't imagine this movie coming out like this now. No. Uh, it, I think it'd be majorly trimmed down and later we'd be like, get the unrated cut and it would be, I don't know, maybe not, not even this much, I don't think still. But I just like... Think about the discourse that happens around a movie that's even just a little gross nowadays and how yeah. blown out of proportion it gets, you know? And then by the time you see it, you're like... Mm, or I it? see graphic <laughs> violence and it doesn't kind of... I don't know. It doesn't have the same impact as yeah. these movies yeah. used to have. It's like, oh, that was horribly gross, but... Yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. one's got, I mean, eventually it does. It has impact because it is a two-hour movie that does give an arc right. to this character. So when we get to the gross stuff, it does have impact. All the gross stuff, I say, has impact. It's not... It doesn't feel superficial for this movie. Like, we're putting it in there just to gross you out. No, there is purpose to what he does with the body horror in this movie. Purpose to the grossness. Purpose to the gross. I like purpose to the grossness. I think it's Mm -hmm. interesting, too, how, like, invested you can get considering this isn't, like, a disease or anything that really affects anyone other than this guy's life. You know? Like, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's still gross and you're still horrified by it, but it it doesn't affect 
anybody else in the movie except for like him and Gina Davis, really. Like, yeah. you know, it's just I love how small the scope is, but it works so well. Yeah, because sometimes, I mean, I guess that's how you relate to it, right? It's like it feels very personal because right. you get to know these people and yeah. the scale yeah. is so intimate. I, I was thinking about that, like throughout the the process that he's going through. I was like, why are I mean, I why are they not involving more people in this and like having this examined by you know other scientists and well like he says in the movie he doesn't want to become an experiment right that's what that i mean point. like I, I feel like anyone would get to a point where like okay maybe it's time to pull someone in on this right. well that's when we but, get to part two yeah where there is it's a whole experiment and oh, his child well, there is you being go, Holly. There you, go, you watch gotta watch two. see yeah. this is why sequels are made yeah <laughs> if you, the you have these questions they've explored it if you want to <laughs> hear what we thought about that you just got to go back we actually did an episode a long time ago on the fly i was not here you were here for no, it. No. just Colin. All right, there is a freak show episode on the fly too. If you there go is. back, um, what do we think of uh, John Getz Stathis Boren's character in this movie? He's extreme. He's slithery. He's a creep. He's very creepy. He's always don't creep. like it because he's an ex. Obviously, he's an ex of um, Gina Davis, but he's also her boss at a certain point. Like he's her editor for all the work that she mm-hmm. does. So he's kind of got that. He literally stalks Power her. Over. Yeah, he, he says, yeah. "I followed you here." Yeah, he, yeah. he does. Yeah, and he's he's very um, and becomes very over dramatic as far mm-hmm. as his feelings towards her and everything, and and their past and all that. So he's playing creepy. He does have some moments where it, uh, he is. It seems like he is a better human being, but they're few and far between. Do they elevate him to hero by the end of the movie? No, I wouldn't say hero. No, but he. Yeah, not hero. Not I think hero. He's sort of a lifeline or a protector of sorts, but not yeah. a hero. But it is like it's a fine line. I guess that maybe that's why I'm drawing attention to it because it is like a it's he's a character with like two sides to it, where it's like you know he is um, creepy. I guess slimy. You know, slimy, yeah. when he said slithery, slithery, I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. it. He seems like a very slippery, yep. you know, kind of guy uh, who obviously can't let her go. He and just wants do... to be in her life. Right. But like yeah. when she needs someone, he does actually step up yes. and is going into harm's way in order to, to protect her and at the end. I mean, they do kind of frame him up. He's going in with a shotgun at the end, you know. And right. he does I think do something that saves her life. He but it's does. hard to buy him as a hero because his motivations aren't good. And that's yeah. it. Because his motivations are a little different. Like, he's a very, he's a great character. Which is, I mean, I suppose good that he's not yeah. black and white where you have yeah. these questions I think about. the thing that, like, to me makes the, uh, where he goes by the end is, like, by the, he doesn't seem to have, he's a, he's a very, I don't know, it's not like flippant, but he's not really taking anything seriously like the whole way through the movie he's kind of joking around about stuff and even like there's there's that moment when she when she finds out that she's pregnant and she and he takes her to his doctor friend to get an abortion even he's like not understanding why this is so like immediate like this is urgent that it needs to be done he's just got a fucking agenda yeah he's just like we yeah we need to get rid of this, we can be together. Is his yeah. Thought. yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. like, "Why do we have to do this right now?" It's yeah. like because she probably has larva inside because of her. It, yeah. Because it's like Creep. a Prometheus situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do it now. So he does care about her and her well-being, obviously, but but in his own sleazy way with his own agenda. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I guess yeah, that's there. So I mean, I, you know, but it felt to me in that moment he was actually doing what she wanted to do, and you know, kind of knowing that l- later down the road this will pay off. This may pay off yes. for me, but it, like right then, it's he's like, invested in a savings account he plans yeah. to cash yeah. out exactly. Yeah. He is. exactly I mean but I, you gotta give him credit I think the first thing he asks her is like well what do you want to do mm-hmm. so he is just like right, right. but they, his motivation behind that yeah. is also to benefit him right, right. but he so, is a, on some level a caring individual but it's if she was if she was yes. just like a normal co-worker he wouldn't be so wouldn't be so right. coming with his like help, helping her this right. is also no, no. very true right. and also the circumstances which he does know about of yeah the, that he is, i like, like how sean you're like but stalkers man. care it's like, <laughs> they, care they care so too much. much yes just let me love you <laughs> <laughs> Well, I take it that at the end, like, I guess, you know, he's more serious, I suppose. And once the, ser- you know, in a serious situation, then he's actually like the person that 
you know, there is like a person there with all this other yeah, stuff yeah. kind of stripped away. But I He's think, like, oh, fuck, there is actual danger here. Yeah. But I yeah. think then the movie kind of helps with your, um, you know, uh, ambivalency with him by like severely maiming him. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> so that's almost like he's yeah. getting what he deserves right. in and some way like he should as a get character that. not in that right. moment you know mm -hmm. but it's like, like as a character right, he's gonna save her but we'll also melt off his hand and do yeah. it for you yeah, yeah. I'm like okay and I, yeah. okay and i forgot how the character progresses because he's in the sequel yeah oh jeez yeah and i, with, I don't remember with a, uh, please tell me he has a hook oh no he's got a black he's got like a black, black fake glove hand. Oh, and he walks yeah. with a cane and yeah. okay yeah. well and i that's but lame. i don't know what his his uh thoughts and I want him to be movie. like a grizzled, like PTSD dude with a hook. Mm -hmm. well, it's not no? quite that, but <laughs> sorry. Oh, God, I, I, I'm gonna, go I'm gonna say the it. black glove sounds a little too dignified for this guy. Thank like, you. You know, yeah. he needs something <laughs> tackier. Yeah, is he still the editor of? I can't even remember. I, yeah, see, I, I have to go back. Yeah, I know that one has yeah. to deal with the son of Brundlefly, yes. Eric Stoltz, I, and he I gets so. to put Eric on, Stoltz. I think, a lot more makeup, maybe even than uh, you know than, than Jeff Goldblum has to do in this movie. So in the sequel, she never got the abortion. Uh, she a, died during childbirth. I think, like, right at the beginning of the movie. Of the movie. Yeah, it's like, not wow. even her. You know, oh, yeah, she oh, said yeah. she's not coming okay. back. And well, I mean, at least that's a sequel I can buy. At least yeah. you should watch it. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, uh, so I guess bigger um, monster to get there. Yeah. There's two, two of them. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, watch it. There's two of them. <laughs> I'm out. I remember. I don't think there's it's two. Twins. I know he no, transforms. Yeah. God, that would be hilarious. Yeah, and there's another love interest, and it yeah. becomes another because it basically follows similar paths, you know, yeah. narratively. The first movie, because when you do a sequel, you just basically give people what they liked about the first movie, you repackage it and give it to them. Yeah, again. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <you're stalled. laughs> do you? The do. eventual fly, <laughs> because. Jeff Goldblum does actually exit the movie. And I always think that this is a tricky balancing act for movies to pull off when they take a character out and replace them with some kind of, I mean, it's either a CGI character or in this case, it's a puppet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That has to right. emote. And somehow you, the viewer have to say like, that is the same character. I still mm -hmm. see the humanity of Jeff Goldblum yes. in luckily, this plastic and rubber thing that's mm -hmm, being mm -hmm. puppeted. Face fall off. <laughs> right. Well, luckily, it helps. luckily yeah. they do it near the end of the movie, so there's not a big gap between it's him only and a Goldblum few minutes. and him yeah. being a fly. They don't yeah. linger on like, that It all version. happens right there. Sure. And the design, again, uh, 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 effects work in this, the design, the eyes. The eyes are yep. like a, a constant thing between Jeff Goldblum having you know his eyes and this and the eventual, you know, backwards leg fly that turns up in the end of his the brundle fly yes yeah. the actual mm -hmm. brundle fly and his eyes and everything mm -hmm. his eyes pu push through like his and his skin and pull the skull this is off. A, gr a great transformation yeah like, and then just, it like splits it's into just... three pieces and falls off but then yeah. did you notice okay his face skin falls off on the floor and they cut mm -hmm. to she steps on she it, steps yeah. On yeah. it. Yeah. she steps on his face skin <laughs> it's so right? gross and he's like oh, grabbed her so and his hand, the hand skin is transformed and all falls yes. off and yeah. just the whole shedding it's of shedding the is really gross. It's right and he is it's shedding it's accurate but it's too gross yeah yeah but that's what should be used to describe what is happening it's yeah. very gross yeah because it the, all just slides and plops off onto the floor it's yeah really great but Jim Davis is constantly stuff. having to deal with men whose jaws are falling off this is <laughs> two <laughs> movies here where this is happening mm -hmm. that was really Do we have a third yeah and, yeah and so we end up at the end mm -hmm. yeah but it's a um i guess yeah I, I, the the monster design to me was like uh I don't know. It's still expressive, I yes. suppose. And, and I, I think, again, like a lot of this is still Howard Shore to be credited so much mm -hmm. for yeah. why you still think, you know, and still feel, I guess. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe that's the thing you're still feeling for this rubber thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, as it's oh. at begging for death. It's such a. Like, that moment for me this is why it's one of my favorite movies like the the combination of the music and the sadness and the situation yeah. that everyone's in and that he's just like he, he, that monster grabbing the gun and putting oh, it to his head it's man. it's devastating at this point like yeah. everything comes together at that point which is great because 
a similar scene in Creep Show with the lonesome death of Jordy Vero when he goes to shoot himself. It's kind of funny because mm-hmm. he's like he's like a green rug trying to shoot himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so like yeah. it's hard to take that s- scene seriously. But yeah, in this one, it is legit. It is. Yeah, and there's yeah. there's a there's a moan to the monster mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. he at that mm-hmm. point. Like the I I can feel all the humanity coming out of this mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, and a lot, again, a lot of that is that score. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Her abortion nightmare. Oh, oh that's traumatizing. Also it's that. Have fun with that, ladies. Rough. Like, that gives birth it's traumatizing. to a larva. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. Larva. <laughs> yeah, and it's just wriggling around. I think oh, there's a deleted so scene where she gives birth to a baby with butterfly wings. Why? why yeah, because he says that? something to the effect of <laughs> the doctor, the larva? David Cronenberg. <laughs> he says something to the effect of like, "There's something. There's more there's in more here. Yeah. A lot I more. I think yeah. maybe she had twins, but now I can't remember if she did. In the, mm. uh, oh, maybe in that the, would make that line would make more sense. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. it would. Yeah, that scene was very uncomfortable. Very. very. It felt felt. It reminded me of the the orphan cold open. Actually, I was like, "Geez, we just had a scene like this not long ago." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's effective. I think it uh, it makes people squirm. That's mm-hmm. what you it's know. A, oh, for sure. Cronenberg's known <laughs> for. Um, and I guess uh, this was a uh, rewrite um, that Cronenberg did of a uh, script by a guy named Charles Edward Pogue. I only remember him. Um, because, you know, I used to read Fangoria and 1986 was his year because he also wrote Psycho 3. And so you had both movies ended up coming out like, you know, within a month of each other or something like that. And I'm not sure if he's done anything since, but obviously it seems like when you watch this, it sounds like the dialogue is David Cronenberg's, uh, a lot of, you know, I mean, it just, it feels like there's a lot of David Cronenberg probably Mm -hmm. in that second draft when he, uh, rewrote it. And, uh, how this connects to the Elephant Man? Uh, this movie was produced by Mel Brooks, indeed, who didn't have his name on the movie or didn't advertise it because he didn't think it would be taken seriously with his name on it. He's probably right. That, yeah, probably that's, that's right. a good call. It is yeah. the first. Uh, what is it? Brooks film. It is the first title thought, we see. Uh, uh, Elephant this. Man was is that that was also wasn't that a Brooks film? I think so. That's why I was bringing that up because yeah. I thought that was his first. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you were well, just well, saying the first credit is... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah obviously the, in this movie, the first yeah, yeah, credit yeah, up yeah, is yeah, a Brooks yeah. film yeah. production. Yeah. Yes. yeah, but it never he's never actually credited, but I remember mm, him yes. you know, being interviewed and he said, yep, I'm responsible for unleashing the fly on yes. this planet or something like that. And Thank you, Mel Brooks. Yeah. But one of, my, one of my favorite things about this movie is that it fucking knows how to end. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, well, yeah. there it is. Like, there it is. We get to the tragedy. We, uh, there's nothing else we can do. Go to credits. But it it ends like a, I mean, it really does feel like a stage production or an opera in that because there's a lot of the fog. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's like she blows his head off and cries. It's a big crescendo and Mm -hmm. then it's just done. The stage lights go dim. It works. I love an ending like that. I don't need the the wrap up afterward. Just end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's leave these people with their tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. I do love that every time one of the pods opens, the fog is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It rolls out perfectly. It does. Yeah. Fog people on this movie, really good fog people. <laughs> yeah, and good. I mean, just good camera work for his uh, uh, w- the placement of it. As far as Jeff Goldblum's concerned, because right. he's oh, yeah. like naked for a lot of that. I and know just, you couldn't give us a little dog in this little, movie. Like they were going out of their way to hide it in this movie. Yeah. They were they were going yeah, out of their way. I I just always, like, can't show. <laughs> I appreciate those like, no, too sexy, too those sexy. camera moves. Like the the Behind timing. The you wouldn't yeah. be saying yeah. that if it was blocking boobs. Well, it's yeah. probably true. <laughs> you but, wouldn't be saying that. I mean, just like yeah. like how difficult was it to actually like like you know because you got to give there's cues. a reason there's a like, whole share you need to know yeah. well that one yeah. seems like that was maybe easier to do like well, sure. okay go no, and i can make is, it over here but the fog, fog work is incredible the, the, yeah the fog is actually helping in, yeah. in a couple of those shots where you're like if that fog would have cleared out like yeah. you know a second earlier before that camera guy got to that position well, i mean who knows how many takes for like <laughs> yeah, cut i dog. wonder right yeah. we need more fun but like this is a cronenberg movie <laughs> why not runs in you know what I'm like, like well, if was, anyone's gonna do it it was you know? the 80s like, he eventually pushed uh yeah. i think the limits to that uh, the eastern promises <laughs> yeah uh, exactly uh, 10 exactly. minute naked fight in mm-hmm. the turkish bath or yep. whatever it goes on yep. there yes it was yeah all right well Sean, when you lived in la did you ever see jeff goldblum's band no mm-hmm. did i ever I wonder if I ever ran into Jeff Gold- No. My brother went and saw his band when he was in LA. What kind right. of music did he play? Like yeah. jazz. I would say he's a piano player. Uh, yeah, he plays jazz. jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you couldn't tell from 
the part in this movie. Then where he actually mm-hmm. uh, plays yeah. piano. I mean, I thought he, he was a genius too. But he does yeah. that in Thor Ragnarok too. Plays yeah, piano. That's right. <laughs> All right, we're uh, it's we're in his gonna, contract. It's got <laughs> He's like, I can do this if you want to put a scene in there where I, you know. Uh, well, we, Jeff, we you are bring a piano to set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does he? See, you wouldn't surprise me. That might me be his do. rider. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of the fly and whether or not you should watch it. Might not be a lot of surprise here, but you may want to hear our individual thoughts. But before we do that, we are going to read. Some of your mail. It's a hefty mailbag. Oh, I love We're going to read hefty, a hell hefty. of a mailbag. <laughs> so, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. I have no idea what he's spliced I was with. Yeah. Where, where are we at in his transformation? <laughs> yeah, I, are we going further? Is this know. it? Like, is he going to... Pop out he's of his molting. Skin. Yeah, I think he molts. That, he goes back there. And there's like I'm pretty sure things. he's. Have you cleaned his den no. recently? How I'm many pretty, skins are back? I'm pretty there? sure part of him started as larva at some point. Yeah. I, well, yeah, yeah. Part of him. Part of him. Yeah. It's been grafted on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as Igor just skitters across the ceiling. Well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Starnet Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, MF Mad, longtime keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Hello, sir. Wants to let us know that we're inducting two people into the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame off this movie. John Getz. Number one, John Getz. Ah. You're right. Because he was in The Fly tonight. He was mm-hmm. also in The Fly 2, which we did. <laughs> and he was uncredited part of the film crew crew in The Sentinel. Oh, oh, oh nice. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Which I guess had a lot of people in it. Because, like, wasn't yeah. Christopher Walken in that movie, too? Yeah, I seem to remember. Maybe Lance Henriksen. There's a lot of people yeah. in that. Just Black kind of wandering cat, around. in the. Cake. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, Never forget. <laughs> Never forget that cat. A um, David Cronenberg alum, uh, Leslie Carlson, is also in this movie and making his way to the Freak Show Hall of Fame. He was uh, Dr. Cheevers uh, in this movie. You okay. may have recognized him because he was also Barry Convex in Videodrome. Oh, nice. But to me, he always kind of stands out as uh, Graham, the telephone operator in Black Christmas, the one who's running down the road. Oh, trying really? To, uh, yeah. That's awesome. It's coming from here. You got to keep him yeah. on the line a little bit longer. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> uh, about tonight's movie, The Fly B Movie Vault writes in and says, one of the few remakes that exceeds the original, gory, inventive, and full of black humor. It's essential viewing for any horror fan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Peter Gatt says, I watched The Fly this afternoon. It's one of the better remakes. And in my opinion, the subtext is the changes you go through when you fall in love. <laughs> Sure. Yes. Some are that's, more outward than others. Yeah, that's a bleak uh, outlook on love, then. Action. <laughs> well, I mean, like, so come it's on, my cancer that's going to kill tell you. Me, tell me any, like, heartbreak hasn't felt like getting a shotgun to the head. Yeah. At, yeah at there you go. So I think that's why it resonates. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's legit. I'll give you that. <laughs> Action Dude says it's not only one of the greatest sci fi horror remakes, or it, it, it's only one of the greatest sci fi horror remakes, in my humble opinion. Carpenter's The Thing is the champ in this category, then The Fly, followed by the excellent Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh, shit. Forgot yeah. about that one. And another amazing 80s entry, The Blob. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, Kryptonian Orphan says thank you, Saturday Night Freak Show, for reviewing one of my favorites. Body Horror, check. Pete Cronenberg, check. Jeff Goldblum at his most. Gold Blummiest, yes. check. Characters you care for, check. <laughs> An excellent script, actors, plot, special effects, and score. Yes. Check, 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 check. Goddamn, I love this movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, don't thank us. Thank you. Yeah, you all voted for, it. Yeah. You yeah. voted for thank it. Thank your peers. Thank you, the, the mm-hmm. audience. Uh, Pat Hetfield says, didn't you already cover this one? Well, no, we did The Fly 2, but we probably we talked the fly a lot too, about And we did, the again, fly. we talked The Fly on some episode Last Cronenberg, uh, we do rabid or oh, no? Right. I, again, I think I brought it up when we were talking about why are we talking about our top ten? Somebody in the um, comments. I feel like the fly has come up many times. Yeah, yeah. But this is the now we're officially yes, doing. Yeah, official. doing. We have to make fly. it official. Uh, but Pat says, speaking of Cronenberg, isn't his return to body horror worth noting? For that reason, because I want to know if I should see it from people whose opinions I value, and that would be you. I think you should feature crimes of the future on the freak show 
Um, I have not seen it, so I have, I have no opinion. I haven't either. Okay, either. I would recommend that you check it out. If you like David Cronenberg's it stuff, in- then yeah. it's worth looking at. Um, Steve Carney says, do you prefer Cronenberg's remake or the original with Vincent Price? I'm sure others will chime in, but the Fly remake, along with The Thing and The Blob, form a trinity of some of the best special effects mm-hmm. ever. Just Ooh, I like or... that holy trinity. The yeah. thing, the blob, and the fly. That's it even good. sounds good together. Yeah. Like, all oh, that's it. Yeah. 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 Thank you, listeners, <laughs> for giving us that. Yeah, that's good. The original's a very different movie. Very yeah. different, yeah. 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 It's different. It's good. Yes. But I think mm-hmm. this but very one. Different. Mm-hmm. Um, very different time. Isaiah Sanders says, wait, there was a remake of The Fly? Oh, this is the fly was a remake. This is the remake, uh, this uh, is the remake yeah. Uh, Millet Time 86 says a Cronenberg slash sci fi classic. Goldblum is the man. I still need to check out the 1958 original and the fly, too. Is it worth the time? Sean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you'll find af- out after tonight when I go home and watch the fly. Right. Too. Yeah, well, you haven't watched it. You got the I've, Shop I've, I've Factory bug. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this has been a long time, and I, I'm, I'm feeling the urge. All right. Well, <laughs> and then you can go listen to our. Previous episode, uh, Adam Kaler says, as a kid, I didn't like horror movies at all. I was a sci-fi fan, th- though, and this seemed right up my alley, not knowing about the original or Cronenberg. I was absolutely sure. shocked and unprepared when Brundle liquefied Stathis's hand yeah. or when fingernails started coming off. Well, it took a while. These scenes probably started me on a lifelong road to horror fandom. I now appreciate this remake as one of the best and have forever banned transporter technology from my household. Uh, I yeah. love when uh, I love a pivotal horror moment in your childhood. Yeah. And then what a good movie to have for like to be that turning point. I, know, I was just thinking about like how it would have been oh, to, for been all for audiences to like see this for the first time and know nothing about it. Yeah. Like, that's that's a shocking revelation. I would have right been there. horrified. I would have been horrified. As a kid. Oh, my God. Yeah. This would have scarred me. For I did life. see parts of this yeah, as a kid that. and I was traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch much of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, Jeff Goldblum. Nope. Nope. Not for children. <laughs> that is not Jeff Goldblum. No. Well, Nelson Nascimento says Goldblum deserved an Oscar. Amazing delivery through all that makeup. It's in my top 10. Yes. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, my dad is such a fan of the original 1950s movie. I'm pretty sure this is how I learned things like remakes exist. <laughs> and because of the quasi superpower nature of some of this movie, I do think it was an easier sell to someone like me who is not a huge horror movie fan. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, Richard Kratzer says it's one of the best horror sci-fi body horror movies ever made. Special effects are next level and all practical. Goldblum and Davis give convincing and memorable performances to say what happens to them is tragic would be a gross understatement. And even John Getz, as slimy as his character is, he kind of feels sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, it's a Canadian sorry. movie. Yeah, Canadian. So I just kind of fell into it. I feel kinda, sorry for him. He kind of <laughs> feels sorry for what eventually happens to him. A lesser actor couldn't pull off that complexity. I mean, probably. Yeah, He's, sure. Uh, Jonathan Holt says, yes. About <laughs> us picking the fly. Are you guys picking the fly for us? I've seen a lot of horror movies in my life and a lot of gross special effects, but to this day, I can't watch the compound fracture arm wrestling scene. I love this movie regardless and can't wait to hear what the freaks have to sh- have to say and happy 2023. I feel well, like I that scene be. is the easiest to watch. Uh, I think Sean's <laughs> right, though, that the yeah. white ooze coming out. Yeah, of that part's, yeah, that's that part's that's that's around the brain. You know what I, I was th- watching it tonight? I'm like, you know what it is? I think they oiled them up with something to make them look sweaty. And that's what you're seeing. He's oh, grabbing sure. it so tight that it it's looking oh, like just, pus or something. You're like, what is that on his hand? It's just leaking. Um, like when he when when he takes off the fingernail, like he yeah. just starts dripping. Yeah, like yeah. he is a leaky all, person. Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah, But the actual like arm breaking, that's like the least gross part right, of this movie. That, yeah, it's like the easiest thing at this point. Yeah, knowing the rest of it. It's like, if you thought that was bad, wait 10 minutes. <laughs> like, I can handle that. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler says, I love this movie. This and The Thing, 1982, are the prime examples of how a remake should be done. Jimbo Ices, I mean, it's a top five all-time remake. Cronenberg, Davis, and Goldblum all at the top of their game. It's gross, sad, horrifying, funny, exciting, iconic, and also on the list of films that I saw at a way too young of an age, which probably formed my lifelong taste for schlock and gore. Yes. Uh, Asobi Datura says this film is an untouchable classic, along with John Carpenter's The Thing, should end the discussion on horror remakes being bad or even having no value. And it's a Toronto classic yeah. as it sets up the idea that if you're a bar fly in Toronto, you may have the chance of being picked up by a hunky Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Well, there's an saw, after you know, Yes. That. 
He's That's, a hunky guy. Michaela, yes. Michaela loved oh the outfit. Oh my god! Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I love that it's going out. I'm going to get some outfit as a leather jacket and like baggy pleated pants, and that's no it. Shirt. No shirt. <laughs> no shirt. No shirt. But Just scarf and you know, a candy bar. I, that's the message I'm taking away from this movie. I'm choosing to just look at an inspirational story. Yeah. You know. She thought she was just gonna have a weird night at the local <laughs> bar. And quit, nope. She got, yep. You know? Weird night. Was she a hooker? No, I don't think so. I think they kind of implied it a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, this was. time around, I was like, "Oh, he's saying that because she actually, she's saying that because she actually is a hooker." But I could be wrong. I don't think um, she was. No, just looked like one. She's just, <laughs> <time. laughs> yeah. just looking for a good time. Yeah, she's looking for a good time. The Film Effect Podcast says we covered this back in October for our Halloween Horathon event. And upon rewatching it for the episode, the ending left me emotional for the first time. Tears were definitely shed. And I think that says a lot about the movie because it's a journey. And that final moment is supposed to make you feel something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gets mm-hmm. fucking sad. Devastating. Yeah, it's a bummer. Um, a great bummer. The <laughs> last movie that we watched before we did our best and Curtains. worst of the year was oh, yeah. Curtains. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Brian Nielsen says I caught curtains a few years ago and it made me realize that not every lost horror film is a forgotten masterpiece True. it's not gold just iron pyrite exactly. yeah <laughs> true words there you go. very so true good. we, we yeah. learned that lesson the hard way many times yeah yes but that's what we're here for that's yep. what we're here for yeah uh, Aaron Gilmer says that she interviewed Lynn Griffin over on her podcast oh, she did. She sent Manic us. Movie Monday awesome. she sent us that I yeah. listen to that yeah it's in our messages somewhere oh she nice sent yes I listened to a little bit of it. I haven't finished it yet, but uh, congratulations, uh, yes, Aaron. That's, that's awesome. Um, Aaron, are you also Aaron Dawn Murphy's mom? I'm also wondering she this. She changed her name. <laughs> I'm wondering because I saw the Aaron's <laughs> Aaron I'm just like, what? Uh, but she also says that the breast double in Curtains was Shannon oh. Tweed. Oh, wow. Oh. She pops up everywhere, doesn't Literally. she? Literally. Ha ha. Boobs. And uh, she also uh, wants that hag mask so bad. Yeah, why is Trick or Treat Studios not making and selling that mask? I know. Do they have one of those the five out people there? Somewhere? And else, like, <laughs> you, although that might just you know, be a, the horror industry will buy any merch that's, that's put true. out. And it's horror generic, and I feel like that's creepy. Yeah, it's a manic movie Monday podcast. Was that one? Uh, Steve Carney says I rewatched Curtains last night Sorry. since I hadn't seen it in about ten years. The transfer on the Synapse Blu-ray is fantastic. Oh, grub it in. I'm yeah. glad you had that. Wow. So there's a disconnect because the film is so boring and a chore to sit through, unfortunately, and I rate the film two out of ten and you okay, can so skip it. It still yeah. sucks even if you can see it, huh? Well, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does have its defenders, we found out as we were perusing the letterbox yeah, reviews afterwards, but uh, they're mistaken. Uh, so mm-hmm. now, I'm going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of The Fly, starting with... Sean. Okay. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think like just going through the mailbag and how we've all uh, discussed this movie thus far for the last uh, hour and 15 minutes, uh, it's a it's a classic. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Like um, uh, like we said, everything comes together for this movie. Cronenberg, Goldblum, Gina Davis, the special effects, the score, the script, a simple story, a great arc for a character. Jeff Goldblum is acting his ass off in this movie. Um, it's all fantastic. As everyone said this, a Stone Cold classic. Uh, we're right up there with the thing and the blob and everything of its time. Um, yeah, obviously, you. somebody said in there, it's like it's, uh, uh, you, for any horror fan, it's a must watch. And it definitely is. It's fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it. Listen to the last hour to hear all those good things. Um, I love it. Uh, I'm going to go watch the sequel tonight. Uh, so <laughs> I recommend The Fly, obviously. Um, Holly. What'd you think about David Cronenberg? How do you fly? feel about that karate chap coming I know. at you just now? This is kind of aggressive, but I'm okay with it. That's how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Express your joy. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the fly. I think it's kind of unanimous. Like this is a great movie. It's iconic. It's you know, top shelf Hollywood uh, horror. Uh, you know, this is this is a wonderful movie. Um, it's almost this close to not being able to be reviewed on this show because like if we brought the thing we'd all be like yeah the thing's great yeah which we talked about on the episode of the thing yeah the remake yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> special, special effects are good. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. so we're, we're close to just not yeah. even be able love to say Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. <laughs> beard. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that, that's, yeah. that's the gist of you know what, I'll, I, I will say i will say i'm not a huge gina davis fan Okay. Not a huge I, fan. I, I yeah. After the yeah. yeah, this movie, I was. Like, I think Oof. she's okay. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's anything spectacular. She's doing okay in this. She's Whatever. 
better. And Wasn't she the president on some TV show yeah. for a while? Yeah. Oh, she was. was it yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Tammy Leone also no. president? I don't know. She was, well, that was no. a thing. She was also Madam President. Mad- I don't know. Yeah. I, I wasn't that, that the Taya Leone show? I could be wrong. Ma- I think that was Madam Secretary because she's a secretary in that show. I the Secretary know. of State. I thought there was, but doesn't she become the president because at the president point, dies? At a certain point, why do I know this much about this show? I was <laughs> like, have you watched it? No, I've just seen the commercials. No, but constantly. Gina Davis was in a thing where she was the president. Yeah. She was yeah. also in Grey's Anatomy for a little while. Wow, she's done a lot. She, and yeah. Beetlejuice and Beetle League of Their Own. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, it's we Gina know, Davis. An American yeah, tourist. Know. Everybody saw it. Yeah. We know Gina okay. Davis. And like I said, like she's okay. She's fine. Whatever I'm the just. Vampire 5000 movie you said. Yeah. Transylvania 6000. Yeah. Okay. And Earth Girls are easy. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite. Right. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, I mean, I, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about The Fly, except for it's really disgusting, <laughs> but that's also not like a bad thing. It's just, it's, I've come to the conclusion that I like David Cronenberg. I appreciate him very much, but I don't rewatch his movies often. Yeah, same. You know, because they're either really harsh or really graphic, just disgusting. Um, and not that I'm not okay with it. Obviously, we watch a lot of that on the show, and I'm okay with it. But it's not something I rewatch for pleasure very they often. They stick with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they stick with you. And I'm like, I don't Sometimes need to rewatch in it. Ways. <laughs> yeah, like I don't need to rewatch it. It's burned in my memory. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no, The Fly is classic. It's great. I have obviously I'm going to recommend it. I think we're all going to recommend it. But let's find out, <laughs> Colin. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I was caught up with, I was thinking while you were talking there about the, uh, like David Cronenberg, but this is like his most accessible movie. I think and maybe Definitely between more this accessible and, than Videodrome. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that later stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, history of violence, I think is also like, yeah, in, that was a big deal. When yeah. It came out. Yeah. Like yeah. that was a big movie. But a know? lot of his stuff, when I try to watch it, they're very, um, what would you say? I mean, I wouldn't say, but clinical. like a dangerous methods, like a period right. drama. So that's pretty. Yeah, but even like it's you know, that's uh, hard to. Yeah, I mean, but that that could could get nominated for an Oscar. You yeah, know? but like, I mean, not accessible to a uh, 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 an everyday audience. I guess that's what I'm saying. Mm. Like, I know those are critically successful, yeah. and mm-hmm. they're kind of geared toward. You know, like I guess intellectual. If I'm going to tell my mom to watch a Cronenberg movie. I'm not going to tell her to watch right. like anything right. pre 2005. Yeah, it's going to be know? The like, Fly, yeah. right? Probably is like The Fly is the you know. Um, I think is it so? Then is it his best movie? Um, some of the other movies he's done may have been more personally expressive to him or whatever. But I think that's in this. I think there is a lot of David Cronenberg mm-hmm. in the movie. Uh, a lot of his obsessions and a lot of his interests, uh, a lot of his personality. Um, it's a very touching movie. I think that's the thing. I think that uh, when you think David Cronenberg, maybe you don't think of a guy who really makes, you know, heart rending uh, films, right? right? Mm-hmm. Like his, like crash is a very cold yeah. movie about, you know, sex, mm-hmm. you know, which is kind of the, the uh, opposite there. Um, but that seems to be like what he does. He's kind of cold and calculated in his construction stuff or abstract, but this one seems very human, um, Odd. very relatable. <laughs> Ironically, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, he treated it serious, I guess. You know, when you, you when you're talking about the the subject, I guess it does kind of. You know, we're horror fans, so we see this kind of stuff all the time. But I mean, when you're playing with a big budget, you know, movie, especially in 1986, I think this is probably a gamble for a lot of people who are involved. And so that's why I'm like, well, it stood the test of time. It's one of the best horror movies, one of the best science fiction movies. Uh, I'd say it's one of the best dramas to me, you know, that I've ever seen. Um, definitely a top, uh, you know, whatever it's, it's up there. Yeah. Um, the fear that I have is, um, there doesn't seem to be, I mean, obviously, you know, like we we've got a bunch of reader uh, listeners writing in, uh, who've seen it. Um, but I always assume that the people, you know, it's like I saw it when I was too young to see it or yeah. I saw it many years ago. I was part of the wave that saw and appreciated this movie when it came out. And I don't know that the fly is still like if you talk to, you know, younger uh, audiences today know about it, you know, and then that leaves the door open to some Hollywood executive going like, well, 
you know what we haven't tapped into? Blumhouse. We haven't done another yeah. remake of the full. We've got to update yeah. it so they can relate to it. I'm like, no, this is a fucking perfect movie. I think it's a perfect movie. Yeah. You know, if they remake um, it, it'll be like he's a superhero. You're the world's first superhero. It'll be something yeah. stupid like, yeah. It's going to be like I mean, that. It's like this is you a perfect gotta movie. You just got to learn how to control it. And mm-hmm. as uh, Sean told you earlier, it's like uh, you, you can't make a remake unless you can do it better. And I don't think you can do. You can't. I mean, you can't do it better. Than hopefully, I don't. Hopefully, that's why nobody's touched it yet. Yeah, for they're like, because they're like, we can't. I can't do better. Yeah, but what I thought that about a bunch of movies, I mean, Halloween. I thought you couldn't do true. better. I mean, I still uh, we'll think get to that, that. But we'll get they to would that. still <laughs> attempt it. You know, to remake it. Uh, you know, or The Exorcist. They they got remakes of that coming out. All the horrid, horrors, hallowed grounds are being remade. Thank God they haven't come to The Fly. It's a perfect movie. You should watch it. Michaela, what do you think? I'll show it to my son just to continue on. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Please, yeah, you gotta, please yeah. continue his legacy. Yeah. No, I think I agree, Colin. I think it's a perfect movie. I think that I totally forgot how funny it was. Like, it is I totally funny. forgot yeah. how funny. I legit laughed out loud a few times watching this movie because you just all, when you think of this movie, you just like, you're your gut thinks first you like your stomach hurts first because <laughs> yeah. you think of all the puke and the gross stuff and the viscousness and it but you forget that it's also a really heartfelt movie and a really funny movie it it really is like a hat trick of a perfect movie in that sense and i i love that these two people seem like very real and normal people and not necessarily like movie stars does that make sense mm-hmm. like these feel like yeah. real people mm-hmm. yeah. and i that's i feel like we don't get real people everyone's like a model in movies now and you don't mm-hmm. not that these people aren't attractive but like they're more conventionally attractive yeah. they're attainable right yes. like yeah. um and i just and their real chemistry comes through on screen i think and i just like it's a it's a perfect moment in time that is like we are so lucky to have and so i think you yeah you got to watch it but I feel like know know what you're getting into when you're gonna watch it, which if yeah. you're familiar with Cronenberg, it shouldn't be a surprise. But yeah. you know, um, this is not not some Phantom of the Opera type, you know, buttoned up classy movie, even if it is an opera. It, this is dirty and gross and mm-hmm. sticky, and it just really shows you the ugly sides of everything. But so. aren't humans gross? And yeah. sticky and yes. Yes. just warts and all in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, and look at that poster. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's a class act, right? That's, that's, that's great. If, yeah, movie but art. Colin, right I think a part of the problem with this movie, when it comes to like <laughs> keeping it alive in the culture and whatnot, is like there is not good iconography from this movie that you can put on like shirts and stuff. Like, there's not much because there's not much in the movie. It's like the pods, Goldblum and Gina Davis, and that's like it. And the monster, it, yeah, like, right? yeah. But um, you know, like Halloween has a million different things you can put on a shirt, and that's why they can endlessly you can put make a pumpkin merch. on a shirt. And be yeah, like, Halloween. People yeah, are know what I the have fuck a that shirt is. that is literally just a Halloween font, and it says "Produced by Deborah Hill." Like, well, I yeah, have yeah. that shirt. You know, like so, like, but even if you just think about with Halloween, the pumpkin, the knife, the tombstone, that Michael with the glasses and the sheet, regular Michael. There's so many different action figures of like Halloween, right? Whereas this, you have like there's like five characters tops in this movie is there a you know fly action figure i'm sure neca has got something i would kill right? for you one know? that will shed and maybe yes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's a rights <laughs> thing too maybe, maybe maybe there's not a lot of licensing options for you know this movie too because i know that sometimes companies will get licensing deals and then the licensing is so strict that they can't actually do anything like yeah. uh fright rags had said one time they finally got licensing for die hard and they said okay you can't show the building and you can't show bruce willis mm-hmm. it's literally but you poster. but we're still gonna license we still have licensing so go make a die oh, yeah. shirt well, yeah. i've heard that yeah. on, uh, uh shout factory yeah. i think at one point was saying like if you look at their post you know whatever their, yeah. their artwork that's done for their movies if you can't see the character's face, yes. it was because they yeah. didn't have the license. To so yeah, we're looking at you, what? Texas Chainsaw Next Generation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Took so, off Matthew McConaughey and yeah. Renee Zellweger off the front. Right. So who knows what the deal is with this movie, if that's something like that. But yeah, I don't see a lot of companies like... I've seen a few, but not nearly as many for like the slashers making like t-shirts and merch and stuff. But it, this so would be perfect. dive into this opportunity, yeah. Just the, just the pod, no words or anything, just the it, pod with the hand and the leg coming uh-huh. out. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> It's you, beautiful. Oh, about? there is a fly action oh, the figure? Fly, yeah, yeah, oh, there's one of these. Yeah. The fly uh, movie yeah. maniacs, yeah. Todd oh, McFarlane. You, you I don't have the fly. You yeah. need one yeah. for that. I got them up all over the yeah. wall here, yes. but I don't have the fly. So. So Damn. there That's are awesome. Yeah, oh, well, does I mean, it come with puking action? That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so freak show approved <laughs> for the fly. That's right. So contractually that means you have to watch it, but the irony is you've already seen it because you are Right up on top of or the greatest horror oh God, movies just of all fly. time. It's just a fly action figure. Oh, there yeah, you go. Like, <laughs> that's, that's like 
the fog action yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. cotton yeah. with fog yeah. or the invisible man with yeah. nothing yeah. in yeah. it yeah this one's just for fun love yeah it. love it that's a novelty yeah all right well we got three more of the movies that you chose for us to watch uh this month so the next one is going to be <gasps> dun, 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 dun. barbarian yeah 2021's barbarian <laughs> The reason uh, we didn't talk about it very much on our end of year. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So We're we talk hope... about it now. Yeah, that's right. So a whole episode on Barbarian. You're going to find out all about it. So uh, tune in for that next week. And uh, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>